All right, lads. Welcome back to me podcast, Cheaper Than Therapy. Mick Thomas here. How are you? How are you? Listen, thanks for liking, subscribing, sharing, coming on back. I do appreciate you. Uh, I appreciate the love and the support. Get me wherever you're getting your podcast from. iTunes, Spotify, YouTube. If you're watching on YouTube, look at that backdrop behind me. Look at that. Isn't that lovely? I am coming to you live from the Borgata uh, Casino in Atlantic City. Um, figure I might as well get the episode recorded tonight. Get it out early. Um, yeah, that's where I am right now. So you can go to YouTube and check out this cool view behind me. Also, check out my other podcast with my good buddy Corey Brooks, The Man's Idy Show, out now. New episode out now. Uh, very funny episode. Very happy with that one. Also, come and see me live. 28th and the 29th, sorry, 28th, I am at the comic strip for two shows in Manhattan. 29th, Long Island. I am headlining Theater 3, Port Jeff Station. Uh, November 4th, the Giggle Room at Governors. I am headlining. Mick, why are you doing a small room? You're Mick Thomas. I know, I am. I am going to... Um, be gearing up for my special, uh, which is coming at the end of the month, so I kind of want to just work out the hour and see how it sounds. And on the 5th, I am at West Side, West Side Comedy Club in Manhattan. And the 8th, I am also New York City again. I am part of the New York City Comedy Festival. My first time ever being in New York City Comedy Festival is an honor. I'm excited. I'm happy. And I, my show will be at the New York Comedy Club. And all that will lead up to the 25th and the 26th of November, the two days after Thanksgiving, I will be in New Smyrna Beach, Madcap Comedy Club. Tickets on sale now uh, for my special, please. And then we're leading in then to uh, a few dates coming in then, of course, to into December, which will be nice kind of like wrap up dates and having fun. Uh, because I'll be going on the road in 2023. So check it out. It's a lot of build up there. I am so, so sorry about the build up. That's two minutes of shite there. Let's get into it. I have become obsessed with, I don't know if you know this, if you've heard about this, but Daryl Brooks Jr. I even did homework for this episode. Look at that. I even have a pen. I look like a real journalist. All I got to do is keep pointing with my pen, shaking my pen about. And you're like, this guy did his homework. He's not as the moron as we think he is kind of am but i have been obsessed with this case if you don't know what happens it's daryl brooks jr it's always a junior isn't it it's always like it's always a junior that did something anyway you may remember last year you probably just don't know the details of the case but you probably remember hearing something about it at a christmas parade in wisconsin uh daryl brooks drove allegedly because it's you know you can't say he definitely did it but he fucking did it if you watch the tips um if you have eyes, you'll know he did it. Uh, if you don't have eyes, then I get it. Listen to the listen to the case. But if you have eyes, you've already, you already know the answer. Um, so yeah, he drove through a Christmas parade, killed six people, injured twelve. Yeah, seven old ladies and uh, a young girl. As far as I know, it's very very sad. And um, yeah, so now he's on trial. But the fucking the entertaining part of if the death of innocent people is entertaining, which it clearly isn't. But what is entertaining about this case, and I'm not really a big into courtroom dramas. I didn't care about the Johnny Depp, Amber Heard case. I couldn't give two shits, right? Women be shopping, right? There's always a crazy case of a man and a man versus him versus her. She's crazy. Everyone likes to get in, get involved, have an opinion. I don't give a shit about other people's business. Live and let live, I say. But this one I'm obsessed with. Why? Because Daryl Brooks has decided to defend himself. He is defend himself. He's got six cases. He's got six cases. He's got a lot of cases against him. So here's what he's on trial for. And I kind of think he did this at Christmas time on purpose. Because if you listen to the list, it does sound a lot like. He's got six first degree murder charges. 61 counts of recklessly endangering uh, the safety of others. Six counts of hit and run. Two Two, uh, I can't remember my handwriting. Oh, two accounts of, of jumping bail. Uh, one count of uh, minor battery related to uh, a case with his ex-girlfriend and a partridge in a pear tree, right? All that kind of came to light uh, during, obviously, a Christmas festival. So I think he did that on purpose. So if you haven't been following the case, it's so entertaining. It is so entertaining because he has decided to defend himself. Now, he does wear this, what I find, some of the things I find very superficial uh, which you sh I know some you're going to put in the comments here or you're going to you're going to write to me on Mick Thomas comedy on Instagram. Uh, you are going to write Mick. That's terrible what you're saying. You should never judge a man by his appearance and you shouldn't. But having said that, if you're going to court, you should not wear Dwight Schrute's suits. All right. If you're going to court, 
Dwight, the, the, from the Dwight Schrute collection is not the best uh, solution to your fashion. And he wears those shirts that are over, wear too big for him and a tie. You know, you know, like the Walmart combination is the shirt and tie combination. Like if you're a blue collar guy and you're in your young 20s and you still live with your parents, you know who you are out there. You're sad. And your mother, you know, you've got a wedding coming up and like, I don't know what to wear to the wedding, mom. I'm 25 and I don't know how to shop for myself uh, unless it's a bedazzled belt. Um, your mom will go to Home Depot, not Home Depot, she will go to Walmart and she will come back with this plastic pack. In it is a shirt and a tie combination, but usually your mother buys it one size, maybe two sizes too big for you. And that's what's happened. That's what's happened with, with, with Daryl Brooks Jr., who does want to be referred to as Jr. Now, I'm kind of glad he defended himself on this one because I would hate to see a lawyer take a fucking horrible loss on this because no lawyer could have got him off. There's videos of him running through all these people in his car, right? Up close shots of him. Then they're able to follow him through CCTV cameras all to the point where he gets out of the car in somebody's house. They come out and identify him. He's done, right? There's no way uh, There's no way he can get off on it. I don't, I mean, I don't think so. Casey Anthony got off. Um, so he decided to defend himself. You wouldn't be watching this case if he was being defended by some, I don't know, Goldstein and Stein. Like, you know what I mean? Like, you wouldn't watch the case. You wouldn't give a shit about it. But he's defending himself, and it's just a guy that maybe watched a bunch of Law & Order. He had a year to prepare for this, so he's like, I'll just watch Law & Order. I'll figure it out. And that's what he does, and it clearly shows that this guy has been doing nothing just watching Law & Order episodes. That's all he's doing. Every time someone asks a question, he's like, objection. And they go, you know, objection, overruled. Objection, overruled. Like, he objects the dumbest fucking things ever. Like, I can go through some of the things about with this guy, right? Um, uh, so before I go into that, oh, by the way, before I go into that, so you can go on to YouTube, type in, obviously, when you're done looking up me and my stuff, my videos, my comedy, look up Daryl Brooks Jr.'s rap video. Yes, yes, he has a rap video. And this is my problem with with rap videos, right? There's been great rap. Great rap, legendary rap. Dare I name them? Dare I name Tupac, Biggie, all, you know, even, I don't want to be that white guy in his 40s. I remember when rap was good when it was Ice Cube and NWA. That was rap, right? Like typical white guy in his 40s would say, because I just don't listen to rap nowadays. But I've always had a problem with, with flexing. You know, when you when you have to talk about how tough you are and how cool you are, you probably ain't tough and you probably ain't cool. But that rappers never have seemed to kind of got past that, right? Uh, a lot of them, at least. At least the ones I have heard. So I'm sure there's a genre out there of rappers that are fucking just talking about politics, doing a great job, rapping about whatever it is, inflation, uh, the nuclear war that's on its way. I'm sure rappers are there doing a great job. But all I'm saying is the ones I have heard, it's all a bunch of flexing. I'm so tough. I'm going to do this, that, the other. So in his rap video, right? So he's got, he's, he's got a red SUV, which I thought was a minivan. In his rap video, he has the red SUV in the rap video. And he's dancing in front of it. Like, it's a, like a shitty fucking, I don't know. I think it's a Nissan or a Jeep. I don't know. It's not even a Jeep. It's a Nissan, I think, or a, or a Hyundai. It's, I don't know, cars. But don't rappers usually have like big fucking stylish cars behind them? Don't they usually have something worth flexing about? Isn't there something like like a Rolls? Isn't isn't that one a Bentley? I don't I don't know. Is it one of cars a bounce? He's got a regular soccer mom red SUV in his rap video, and he does the typical like rap video. You know that you know that move that that dance move. I don't know what that is. Where you just throw your elbows up and you pull it down, and he snarls a lot, and he does all the snarling and terrifying, terrifying. You know, I, I, it really is. So he then takes that street attitude, right? And he goes to court with it. And he doesn't have the long dreadlocks, by the way. He doesn't have the long dreadlocks anymore, which is sad. I would love to have seen him in court with the dreadlocks with his big oversized suit and his shirt and tie combo. And, uh, you know, I would have loved to have seen the dreadlocks, but he, he robbed us of that. He was balding, which is fine. That happens to men. And he committed to the shave. I would do that if I was balding, which I probably wouldn't because I have the hair of a Nantucket sailor man. But if I was balding, I probably would shave it. I wouldn't try to hold on to it. So he did. Good, good, good for him. He shaved it and he got rid of it. Um, but so, yeah, so he's constantly arguing with the judge, constantly, constantly arguing with the judge. Like he's trying to intimidate her. He's st- like to one point the judge stopped and she goes, I have to stop this right now because he's staring at me, pounding his fists. One time he said, what did he say? What did he say? What did he say? 
How are you even a judge? He said to her. Because some of the shit he says doesn't make sense. And then she's fucking telling him that. And he goes, you know, I'm not dumb. She goes, no, you, you kind of are. She basically said, you can't, you're kind of a fucking idiot, aren't you? And he's taking offense to this, right? So he, so then he gets thrown in content. They throw him out of the room. Then he's talking to it in a little television room, a little television thing. And uh, he's talking back and forth. And he's like a child. And she's like, do you, are you, are you going to come back in the room? I remember I used to get in trouble in school all the time just for telling jokes on, like an asshole. Teacher would be trying to talk about something. You know, she'd be like, oh, yeah. And, you know, the art is spinning constantly. And I'd go, whoa, I'm dizzy. Fucking idiot eight-year-old jokes. And a teacher would make, go, stand outside. Stand outside the door. And you stand outside the door. And 10 minutes would go by, which what seems like an hour to an eight-year-old. Are you going to stop? Are you going to, are you going to behave yourself? Are you going to come back in? If I let you back in this classroom, are you going to behave yourself? Yeah, miss, sorry. All right, in you go. And you behave yourself for the rest of the day. That's what she's doing. She's putting him in another room. And then she goes, are you going to behave yourself? I'll bring you back in. And he's like, yeah, behave. And he's trying to do that gangster stare, right? You know, again, when rappers flex. I'm not intimidated by talk. I never have been, right? I don't know, maybe it's the professional fighter in me. Um, I've knocked out a bunch of lads who do a lot of talking before a fight. Uh, I have been knocked out many times, but I'm not sitting here to stand there like I'm this flawless victory, like a fucking Mortal Kombat uh, fighter. Flawless victory. I uh, I have been knocked out many times. I got the shit beat out of me many times, but I have beat a shit beat the shit out of a lot of lads who talk a lot of shit, and that's what I find like usually kind of the hip hop community is right, and that's what he is. He wants to save Grace, you know. He wants to save face, not Grace. That's that's a weird thing to say. He wants to save face by, you know, like trying to stare down a judge. He's looking over the prosecution, like staring at the prosecution, and everything's like this. He moves his head like this when he talks. The head moves like this to the point where the witnesses are kind of feeling intimidated. Too. First of all, I, I I just laugh. I I I would laugh because you you know you know you know the type of flex I'm talking about where people flex and they mention where they're from. You know that guy? Yo, you don't want to fuck with me. I'm from fucking insert zip code here. You don't want to mess with me, bro. Why? Because I'm from. Okay, what? What? Do you have any nice delis there? Is there a Jamba Juice? Like, I don't. Is there a Pink Berry? Like, why? Why is your zip code determined on how fucking tough you are? I just hate that mentality. I hate the hip hop mentality. Like that. That fucking be afraid of me because I made a video and I talk about being from the streets. So I think they're using some of the lyrics against them. I could be wrong on that one because I've heard that someone's trying to bring in. The stuff they say in an art form. It's not art. Watch the rap video. You'll fucking die laughing. And the guy's got a gun, uh, which is an Uzi. But it's such a fake one. When you close up on it, like you can see it's plastic. It's fucking comical, his homie. It's fucking cla- it's classical. So here's the thing too. The He's not allowed. He has He's fucked himself by being his own defense. Because there's certain parts of this case where when, when it comes to subpoena witnesses, he's not allowed to have direct contact with these people because they feel endangered as that's the law right you're not allowed contact like if i got arrested for hurting somebody i'm not allowed to contact that person during the trial it's just the way it works even if i defend myself so he's got to find another way for that so the court the court decided on their own back and they didn't have to do it they didn't have to do it they subpoenaed the witnesses for him and that wasn't good enough for him so then the judge says we're going to call your witnesses but he wanted all the witnesses in a certain order and it doesn't work like that Give me your witnesses. We'll get them in here. That's it. So he fucking flipped out that the, these witnesses didn't come in at the same at the same at the order he wanted to. Flipped out, playing the card of you're just. What did he say? What did he say? Uh, he said witnesses have been schooled by the DNA. So in other words, he's saying the DNA. You fucking idiot. The DA, the district attorney. Uh, sorry, my handwriting is atrocious. Yeah. So he said by the district attorney. He goes, you guys are are fucking, you know, leading the witnesses. Like you, he's trying to, he's basically done everything except he hasn't done it yet. And I'm not saying he will, but he hasn't played the race card yet. And I believe that might be common because the judge, uh, I don't think she's white. I think she could be Hispanic. What's her name? I wrote that down. She's a very attractive woman, by the way. Now, it's hard to tell what's underneath with the baggy robe and all stuff. Jennifer Doro, Doro, D-O-R-O-W. I thought Doro would be two R's. Doro, maybe. Doro, I think it's Doro. No, that would be Doro. Anyway, Jennifer Doro, very attractive woman. Uh, I think she could be Hispanic uh, if I'm being um, an asshole and judging just by what I see. Again, 
why wouldn't why you know that's an issue nowadays to kind of see what you say or say what you see um but i'm surprised he has because all the prosecution is white all the witnesses apart from his girlfriend has been white and one of the times when he had his ex-girlfriend on the stand i said ex-girlfriend right i didn't mean to say girlfriend if i say girlfriend i'm sorry he has her on the stand and what he does is he goes he holds up these pictures do you know what these are and they object to it. I'm like, what the fuck? What are you doing? You can't just pull something out of your pocket. Any piece of evidence, you have to submit it into the courts ahead of time. You can't just pick something out of your fucking pocket and go, uh, you know what this is, right? So he he's a he freaks out then at his ex girlfriend who, when he got her. So the point is, the pictures that he was holding up are pictures of babies, his baby apparently, his daughter. And uh, so he's saying, if I ran over her, which he did, he ran over her. With his, he fucking tried to hit her with his truck. And he goes, well, if I tried to hit her with my, tr- with my SUV, why is she sending me pictures? Why is she, If I tried to kill her, then why is she sending me pictures? First of all, let me ask that question. Number one, some women are fucking crazy. Some women are fucking mental patients, right? They'll just, you know, you, you, we all know that girl that's in a relationship that she shouldn't be. We all know that girl that went through, like, I like bad boys. Well, this guy's not a bad boy. This guy who pretends to be a bad boy. Um, we all know that girl, but those pictures, his fucking mother sent them to him and he's trying to tell the court that she sent them to him and it was his mad that sent the pictures. It's a fucking circus from start to fucking finish. It's hilarious. And I hear, here's the thing I need to ask too. For those of you out there who, who work in the court systems, uh, I should reach out to my friend Vinny. Vinny works, Vinny D'Agostino, uh, works for the FBI. I should have called him before I did this podcast and did somewhat, uh, of homework on this episode. He says acts a lot, right? Which is fine. A lot of people say that. I pronounce, you've heard my podcast before. I pronounce loads of words different and wrong. But if, if, if you are on trial for murder, should you be using the word acts? And the stenographer, what does she type? Does she type, I'm assuming he's saying ask? I'm assuming he's saying ask or is he saying acts? I want to ask you. And he'll do that in the pause. I want to ask you like that. If I heard someone said to me, I'm going to ask you. I'm like, no, you won't. I'm going to call the cops. You just, do you know, you know what I'm trying to say? So what if he says, well, I told you I was going to ask him and you didn't believe me. She wrote it down. She wrote down, ask. It's not my fault. Your stenographer is fucking messed up. Is that, is that what happens? Like I generally ask that question. I want to ask you, uh, you know, again, I'm not mocking what, how he speaks. Cause I, you've heard me talk weird. Talk. I've said some dumb shit in my time here on the show, these episodes on stage, and uh, the pronunciation of words is relevant. But I mean, when she's typing it, what? Like, if I say things instead of things, a stenographer, she's going to. All right, I know what you're. I know what you're saying. I know what you're saying. You fucking immigrant. But when you say acts, that's a different word. So is things. Is things a word? Has anybody ever heard of things? I'm trying to think of a thing. I don't know. Sounds like a sweet, like ying tings or something like that. I don't know. Um, so yeah, I'm 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 curious to see what the stenographer is going to write on that one. But you know what? It's like they they uh, if you watch videos and you see him, he takes his shirt off when he was originally arrested. And he was put on when he got brought in front of the court. His girlfriend, the kid she has, like she was a minor uh, when he got her pregnant, and then he tried to fucking run her over with his car. Um, uh let me see let me see oh yeah so he wears a mask so the funny the, the, the my favorite part of the trial is the um well first of all one of the funny things when he snapped the prosecution when they all laughed that they were laughing Did you, and you would laugh at him can you imagine being in like whatever job you do now whatever job you're in at this moment in life in time and then some guy from the outside went yeah i could do that i'm gonna do that and they just show up and start like if you're a teacher or a doctor and they just show up and pretend to be a teacher and a doctor based on what they've seen on television or on you know in the movies and that's and the prosecutor's just like this fucking guy he watches law and order and thinks this is what it is so he then he tell he told on him he goes to the judge they're laughing at me she's like i don't well, i can't fucking see him laugh because I, I didn't see him laugh i make sure if to do it again i won't i won't put up with it and uh, they're just constantly laugh, constantly laughing at him. Um, but so the, the my my favorite part of of the trial is the witnesses. The witnesses are st- like they're they're very hostile towards him, which is fucking great. Like he'll ask the dumbest questions, the dumbest questions. And they're like, huh, interesting. Everything is, huh. and he always looks. He always has a look on his face. He always has a look on his face like he's trying to smell a fart. 
Do you know what I mean? Like, he'd be sitting there, he'll ask, and he looks up and he's... But whenever he has a witness on, he wears a mask because he goes to the witnesses, he'll say to him, he's like, oh, so what happened? You saw someone, oh, you saw someone get out of the car, meaning the red car, and the guy and the girl, whoever it is, they all say the same thing. Yeah, no, no, no. I saw you get out of the car. They don't say, they don't say the accused. They don't say the accused. I saw you. And they go, who's you? And he has a mask on. So he goes, how do you know it was me? And he's wearing a fucking, like, a, like not, a, not a, a clown mask or a fucking beauty mask. He's wearing a fucking COVID mask, an M1995. I don't know. M19, is that a gang? N95 mask, you fucking idiot. And they're always, they're asking, like, no, no, I saw you. Oh, who's you? I'm wearing a mask. I might not even be here. I think it was that episode of The Simpsons where they did that, where uh, they asked all this question. He, he, or, remember Lionel Hutz was voiced by, um, yeah, Lionel Hutz was voiced by uh, Phil Hartman, who's dead. And he would have something on, up on, on trial. He would have him up. He's like, are you sure? Are you really sure? Okay, well, let me ask you a question. What color is my tie? And like, it's red and blue with a winds or not. And he would turn around and go, oh, really? Is that what you're saying? Because if that's what you're saying, then what if I told you that in this time, and he just already takes the tie off and sticks up his sleeve, I'm not wearing a tie at all. And the courtroom goes, <gasps> and, they, and they gasp. And he's like, well, if I was wrong about your tie, I could be wrong about this case. So it re- he, it's like that level of stupidity that he has the mask on. And they're like, yeah, I saw you get out of the car after you ran over these fucking people. You know, one guy, he said to one guy, which is fucking hilarious, he was like, he goes, well, it's not hilarious, the situation isn't hilarious, but how he's handling it is, is comical. He goes, how far were you from the car? And the guy's like, um, 10 feet, and there's the fart again, the fart smell. Hmm, hmm. So is it true to say that you didn't get a good look? He's like, no, I got a good look. It was you. And then he goes, then he said to him, huh, yeah, but from 10 feet away, how do you know it was me? He goes, because I looked with my eyes. And I saw it was you. And he goes, what was the license plate? He goes, I didn't see the license plate. Huh, interesting, you saw my face, but not the license plate. He goes, no, I didn't see the license plate because I was too busy pulling my daughter out of the way of a speeding SUV that you were driving. Fucking comical. Like, you, I'm telling you, go look at it. Look at it. Just Google it now. Go into YouTube. It's on TikTok. It's all over Instagram. Uh, I don't know anybody who, I've never talked to anybody about this. And nobody seems to know about it, but I can't get enough of it. But please check it out. It's fucking hysterical. His new witness is tomorrow. It's now I'm recording this on a Sunday. His final witness is going to be his mother. His mother. I, I Imagine calling your own mother as a witness. I remember we used to go to a nightclub in Ireland, uh, Bogarts, down in Ross Lair. And you would go to go to Bogarts, and you had to have ID. And this one girl was there. She had a note from her mother. She's 18. She doesn't have any ID. We you let her in? You know what I mean? My my other friend, he's a he's a bouncer at a place on Long Island, and he told me he told me that uh, he told me that his he got into a uh, fight with this guy, kind of threw him threw him around a little bit, got physical, and the guy went home. And was I'll be back, I'll show you. And the guy was like, oh fuck, nine out of ten times they don't come back. They're all talk. If they do come back, they come back with their friends. This guy came back with his mother. So yeah, that's. That's what I want to see. I can't wait to see uh, this mother thing uh, when she arrives on Monday. But do check it out. Please check out the, the fucking case. It's funny. Uh, anyway, I did. that was like a journalism for me. I got papers, notes, everything. Thanks for liking, subscribing, sharing. If you're watching this on YouTube, give me a thumbs up or a thumbs down. I don't care. I know fucking I see the numbers who watch it. Interact. Let's talk about it. Let's see what you think about um, Daryl Brooks Jr., all right, and thanks for watching, listening, liking, subscribing, sharing it. Check out all my other stuff that I have going on. And as always, wash your hands, you dirty fuckers. Good luck to you. Good luck to you.